Hello Booktube! Today I'm filming my books in February 2020. Um, I've only finished four books. No, that's not true. I finished three books and DNF'd a fourth. And the first book I read was Minette Walters' The Comedian's Shadow. Um, I absolutely love Minette Walters and after I um, sort of DNF two books in January and was a bit disappointed with my reading experience, I decided I needed something that I knew was going to be good and that I knew was probably going to be a five star book because most of Minette Walters books get five stars from me and The Comedian's Shadow was uh, no exception. It follows the story of a young British soldier called Charles Ackland who gets injured um, in Iraq, comes home to England, um, is in hospital, is in a coma for a while and after he wakes up has to recover for quite some time in hospital. And um, we get to know Charles as a very... Um, a very negative person actually about himself and about other people. He doesn't seem to like women very much. Um, he's very cold and very doesn't like people. But during the book it is told that before the accident or before the the attack in Iraq he was a very open and very friendly person. So his psychiatrist um, is wondering what happened to Charles. Is it um, is it because of his head injury that his demeanor changed so much or did something happen in his past just before he went to Iraq? However, Charles has to leave the army because um, of his injuries and he goes to London to try and make a new life for himself. And he's got trouble with a lot of people that he meets and he doesn't trust anyone and um, at the same time there is a series of murders in London and after he's got a run-in with one of the attacked people he is suspected of perhaps um, having killed the others. So throughout the book Charles is our main protagonist and we follow him in his story and Minette Walters is very good at um, creating a bond between the reader and the main protagonist so you're always on Charles' side until at some point in the book there is this moment where you think oh hang on has he murdered these people after all and that is typical Minette Walters that um, at first you have a bond with someone in the book and then there's this point where everything changes where this person does something that is that just doesn't fit the, the image that you have of them so far. So Charles does something that really, really puts the reader in a position where they have to question whether he's done it or not. The other thing I love about Minette Waters is that she um, puts things inside the chapters, like um, police reports from the investigating officer to his superior or... Um, notes on his psychological health by his doctor or newspapers, clippings and things like that that help you try to puzzle out who's done it and who couldn't have done it and all that stuff. So yeah, really, really exciting read. It's really exciting right up to the end and I can only recommend it. It was a five star, of course. The other three books were ebooks on my Kindle, so I have to um, sort of show you the image of the cover. I can't hold them up. And the first one was a German one, German short stories called Erstkontakt mit Violine, which means first contact with a violin. And um, they are nine short stories, um, all science fiction, save for one. One could be classed as fantasy, but it sort of sat well with the other ones. Uh, it was written by Nadja Neufeld and she is very active in one of the book forums discussion boards that I'm on 
And um, so I knew her before as somebody who I've been discussing books with. And then one day she went, oh, and by the way, I sort of published a book and maybe you want to have a look. So all of the people on the discussion board were like, wow, that's so cool. And everybody went and got the book and um, everybody was raving about it. So I had to get it as well. Um, this the thing about short stories is that usually I don't read a whole book of short stories by the same author in one go because even though the stories might all be the same level of quality writing my attention span is too short so if I read say 10 short stories by the same author back to back I would probably always most of the time um, rate the later ones lower than the first ones simply not because they're not as good but because my attention span is just waning it's so usually I read like one or two stories and then put the book away and then get it out again later and read another two stories and then put the book away again so I read it in in little bits but this one was so exciting um, the stories were just so good and also so different from each other so you didn't feel like you're you're reading five stories of the same of the same manner they were really different some played out on earth some on different planets some on space stations some were from the viewpoint of humans some were from the viewpoints of aliens and even the aliens that um, in those stories were like so different from story to story to story. Completely different life forms with different um, physics and different, it was, it was fantastic. Um, so if you're looking for some very, very short fiction that is really, really cool science fiction in German, this is really a good book. The next one I read was Popular Hits of the Showa Era by Ryo Murakami. And this one I read with a book club. And I, it was a mixed experience. I nearly did not finish it at some point. And in the end, I did read it to the end, and I'm really glad I did because it was such a fun roller coaster. It's the story of two groups of people in Tokyo. Um, one is a group of uh, young men who are not unemployed, but they all have something to do. But um, they're meeting each Saturday at one of the young men's apartments just to hang out and do karaoke and. I don't know, watch a girl across the street through the window. And the other group is, um, they are 30 somethings or late 30s women um, who are all called Midori by first name and are basically just meeting up because they're all called Midori and nothing really holds them together otherwise. And one day, one of the Midoris and one of the young men um, meet somewhere in Tokyo on the street and even though they've never met before and they don't know each other whatsoever one of them ends up dead so the group um, that the body belongs to um, decides to um, take revenge for the murder and instead of helping the police um, they find their own clues and they find out who the other group is and they um, kill someone from that group and then the whole thing escalates completely it's it's satire so it's it's very overdrawn and very um not realistic but it's so much fun so we go from an accidental death to a revenge killing to a full-blown war between those two groups and um, meticulous planning of how to kill the next victim and with what weapon and where to get the weapon and so yeah it's a lot of fun and um, I gave it 
three and a half stars simply because the Midoris were great. They were almost five star worthy. But uh, the group of young men is described sometimes so weirdly. They're like, at some point I thought, Jesus, this is like a group of monkeys on LSD. And I did not like reading the passages where the young men just hang out with each other. Those were really just two stars. So it sort of met in the middle at 3.5 stars. The last book I read was um, A Little Lumpen Novelita by Roberto Bolaño. And I DNF'd it because, um, first of all, none of the figures in this book has a name, save for Bianca. It is told from Bianca's viewpoint and first person perspective. She and her brother get orphaned when their parents die in a car accident. And... Um, they continue to live in their parents' apartment, but sort of start skipping school more often and more often until they cease going altogether. And they get themselves some shitty jobs to support themselves. And one day her brother brings home two shady men who sort of start living with them. And apparently they all plan a crime together and I didn't even make it to that crime because um, the book starts, I think the first sentence is something like, my name is Bianca and now I'm married and a mother, but I used to lead a life of crime. And I read about a third of the book and she didn't even so much as steal a pencil. So there was like no crime whatsoever committed by her. Um, and also I didn't like the fact that nobody in this book has a name. It's always my brother this, my brother that, my brother something. And also those two men, it was like um, the Bolognese man and the Libyan man. And it's always the Libyan did this, the Libyan said that. You, you kind of, you don't, you get no connection to these people whatsoever. They're about as deep as a cardboard cutout. And so I found it really, really hard to have any sort of interest in any of the people in the book and in anything they did. Also the whole, at least the first third of the book is pretty much like I went to work, my brother went to work, we got home, we ate, I went to work again, my brother went to work again, we ate, two men showed up, I went to work. My, it's repetitive and boring and she has like no feelings whatsoever like her parents died she's an orphan now she has to sort of look after herself and her brother and there is no i don't know there's one scene where she walks home from work and she she writes like oh yeah tears were streaming down my face but i wasn't really sad and i don't know why the tears did that it would have been such an opportunity to have some sort of emotional scene where she misses her parents or something, but nada. It was just like, oh yeah, tears rolled down my face. I don't know why. Hmm. And now the main reason I DNF'd it, I have to spoiler you. I'm going to put up my hand and you can turn off the volume if you don't want to be spoilered. And I'm going to take my hand down again when I'm finished with the spoiler. Um, pretty early on, after um, the two men sort of move into the apartment, one of them goes into her room at night and um, rapes her. And it's written from her perspective, obviously, and she, or Bolaño, um, writes it like, oh, he came into my room, I don't even know which one of the two, and he made love to me for the first time. I'm sorry, you were just raped, and you go... Oh, he made love to me. And this continues for several nights or weeks or whatever. And it's not even identified which one of the two men does it or if it's both of them. And then for a short time, she sort of locks her room, but then she changes her mind and um, gives them uh, clues and, and sort of waves them into her room to come and continue this statutory rape. 
And let's not forget, this is a schoolgirl who should be in school, who is only working a job because she's skipping school. And I don't know what kind of fantasy Bolaño had there, but he's describing this from the first person perspective of the victim of sexual misconduct. And he decides to have her wave to the men to come to her room to do it again. Sorry, that's not how women work or how schoolgirls work at all. And I didn't like it and I didn't want to read the rest of this shit. So spoiler over. That was my um, reading month, February. I know it wasn't that much, but I don't read that many books in a month, mainly because I'm lazy and I get distracted by other things. <laughs> but leave me a comment if you've read any of them. I'm especially interested if you've read A Little Lump in Love and Lita, if you um, thought that this rape was like something you didn't like, and if you felt that the characters were flat and not really well developed. If you read it and you loved it, I would really like to know your opinion down below. That's it from me for February 2020. And if you want to see my next video, click on the subscribe button and the little bell. And if you leave me a thumbs up, that would really help me. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.